What's up, YouTube? I hold shift back with you, and we've got a first look at the brand new deathmatch training grounds mode. At least that's what it's called so far in the PTS. For all intents and purposes, it's deathmatch. You drop in, you play the game as normal, but you fight, you die, you respawn, you come back, you do it all again. You do the hokey pokey and you turn it all around. Why am I singing like this? I should stop. But it's, uh, it's pretty fun. You know, it's, it's definitely a more casual take on the game. You have a lot of definitely uh, time to play around with new weapons and maybe new classes before you jump in and get ranked based on your play that you're going to be having in the normal game mode. Uh, but let's just kind of break it down while you're watching some gameplay in the background. The Deathmatch Training Grounds is, uh, at least currently on the PTS, a solo mode. They did play around with it with duos. Uh, which was also pretty fun. It will last for up to 15 minutes with up to 50 players. This is a little bit of a change from before. The scoreboard on the right-hand side will show the top three teams as far as how many kills they have. And then beyond that, of course, players will respawn. And the other thing is loot chests will also respawn. So as you see me dropping into Lumberfall here, none of these chests have respawned yet. But you will notice that I do get to keep my weapons and abilities that I had had previously, and also including armor. Uh, and there are a couple of mechanical things about that in particular that I think might need to be looked at slightly, and I'll talk more about that uh, as we go through the game. Players will be spawning in with one chicken life, which will be reset when they're eliminated. So you can get turned into a chicken and then come back if someone doesn't finish the chicken. It's not common that that happens because, uh, as you'll see, it, it really turns into a giant cluster uh, very, very quickly. Uh, there is a single fog circle. It does not move at the moment. Now, they were playing around before with this fog circle just continually moving uh, across the map, and I actually really like that a lot. And I kind of hope that they bring that back in a certain way to where it actually moves faster than it was previously. Again, we'll talk more about that previous uh, further on in the video. Other things before we get in more into the deathmatch mode, there are a couple of balance changes with the more hit scan weapons. SMG damage has been reduced by a starting value of 15 and a percentage value as well, closer to the 110, 120, 130 curve that we said that we were going to be getting with all of our weapons. The clip size also reduced from 35 to 25. So the SMG, well, it's good up close for sure. But beyond that, you really have to quick switch. The 25 bullets in the clip, at even white or green, have a hard time taking down a full target. So if you don't have a purple one, you're probably going to have to be utilizing uh, either a second clip or a second weapon. The slug rifle getting a mini buff as it's now got perfect accuracy that includes while jumping. So while you're 80, you don't even have to ADS with the weapon anymore. Aim down sight. You can just free fire it like you were the crossbow previously and you have perfect accuracy while you're jumping you'll see actually see later in this clip i get dominated by a slug rifle from an engineer who was mid thrust uh, i didn't even have a chance to respond to it it was a really good shot from him the assault rifle has also been nerfed pretty much i would almost say into the ground but not completely damage reduced from a base 100 down to 80 it still increases by 10 per level so it's actually a little bit below the curve that it was before percentage wise reload time has also been increased from 1.8 to 2.5 seconds and the clip size has been reduced from 30 to 25 uh mostly the gun still feels good um the biggest problem is when you compare it to the burst rifle the burst rifle still just completely shines and i think that um there have been some oversights to how good the burst rifle actually is because the gun is actually really really good uh, i was doing the duo's uh, with a warrior and I had a burst rifle and I was just controlling an entire forge by myself just with the with a with burst rifle You'll see a couple instances of that later to, in this clip as well Crossbow has a clip in size uh, size increase pardon me from six until eight the reload speed has been reduced from two until one That'll make it a little bit more viable in the short to mid-range category for sure Heirloom rifle has a refire increase rate from 0.3 to 0.4. That's not really all that big It's just the spread in the bloom and how fast you can shoot it will be increased just a slight amount of it. Throwing axe increased from 800 to 900, and the stone spear increased from 275 to 350. That's actually pretty big. Uh, but let's get back into the deathmatch. This is the big, you know, the look, how do you do with the new mode. And here's the thing with the way that the circle currently is, where it just stands on places, this essentially turns into a can you hold the forge longest battle? It's not really like deathmatch, deathmatch. No one is really fighting outside of the forge areas. And to be honest, 
in a 15 minute game with how long it takes to forge up some of these armors and weapons you rarely get a chance to forge let alone get the things that you forge <laughs> this because you could hear people are landing all over the place the respawn is a little bit short i think but beyond that i think if you're going to keep the forging in the game um, I think there needs to be a couple of considerations. The first, I think, is the later the game goes on, I think the more valuable the chests have with loot. Like, more greens, more purples. Because you can see, we're almost done with this game here, halfway through, and I still have white abilities. I mean, yeah, I could be going around and trying to forge, but like, or, or rather not forge, but I could be going around trying to loot. That's kind of anti-intuitive to the game. Um, and I'm not really sure how to fix it. It's going to be spitballing a couple of ideas. The first is make the chests potentially not respawn necessarily faster but respawn with higher quality loot so that way people can stay in a more even playing field the other that could possibly be is that the forge time is sped up to where it's not a full minute for armors and weapons and all that but you can actually get it at a pretty quick rate a third idea maybe there's an introduction of other forges maybe i'm not sure but I think the biggest thing to keep players moving, because it really does turn into everyone just respawns on the same spot that they just died, kill the person who killed you, you get killed, you respawn, you drop on them, you kill that person, rinse, wash, and repeat. I would like to see the circle be a little bit smaller, I think, than what it currently is, and continually move at a faster rate. So that way people are forced to land in different spots. Right now it's just everyone's landing on really Trinity, Lumberfall, or Fungal. That seems to be just about it. Nobody else is really landing anywhere else. Everyone's just landing right on top of forges, fighting each other, dying, respawning in, doing the same thing over and over again without really even include like improving their loot. So I kind of would like to see things like a little bit more increased rarity with uh, each chest respawn. And I think the forges could be sped up a tad just to help promote trying to get people to get their weapons and stuff the faster. And maybe even a longer respawn time. I, I don't know. It's just right now it just feels really... I don't know. It's fun at first and then it gets really tiring because you just sit with the same weapons the entire game. And then you die. And then you respawn. You have the same weapons again. You kill the person who killed you. It's just... It's such a back and forth. There's really... You know... The, here's the thing. This is what I'm trying to get at, I guess. The enjoyable part about this game in particular was that early fight that happened over in Jade, where I was able to fight and kind of try to outplay people, and now it just turns into, as the game gets longer and longer, just face dive onto a forge, hope that you get one kill or two, you die, you face plunge yourself down onto it again. It's just, it doesn't have the same elements of fighting that the game does normally. And I think there needs to be a way to kind of combat that. You'll see, I drop down things in the forge. I will eventually get these, but again, it's it just takes so long. Like, I feel like I have to sit here and defend this forge. And you can see, just wave after wave after wave. People just keep coming in. And it's just, it's just too chaotic for me. It's too chaotic. And it kind of reduces the fun because it doesn't ever feel like when you get to the mid and late portions of the team deathmatch game that you're ever really outplaying anybody. It's just you're landing behind somebody. They don't know you're there. You kill them. They do the same thing to you. I want to get those elements of ice, more isolated fights or the potential of having those fights be a little bit more concrete and something that you can actually feel like you're actually getting better at the game. Because right now it just kind of feels like you're just face diving in. You get yourself your stuff and then you just get killed and do it over again. I know I've said like 18 times, but here is a prime example. I land literally right on top of this hunter. Literally on top of him. There's not much to outplay there. <laughs> it's just one of those things. I don't know. The game mode is fun. I think it definitely brings a unique element to the game. I like that it's capped at 50 players, by the way. It'll make sure the lobbies stay pretty filled without taking away from the player base that wants to play the normal game mode. I think that's really, really smart. I think it needs to stay at 50 or even smaller if there's a potential of making the circles a little bit tighter and it moves a bit more. I think even 30 to 40 players would be fine, but 50 for now is good. Um, it's just, again, one of those things that I wish that the loot kind of progressed a little bit more uniquely with the rest of uh, the game because it really just turns into can't, how many people can you kill with your green and white weapons until you somehow luckily find someone who was able to loot up something purple or gold. And even still, it, it rarely happens. I've played a handful of games and I've rarely seen anyone drop a sniper or any unique armor pieces that are above green. So it's just really interesting to see. And I don't know if that's part of the uh, what they're trying to do, part of the direction they want to take it but 
I just kind of wish there was more uniqueness in the in the fights late game because it really does feel like just a, a straight up face mash uh, as you get later and later. And yeah, I guess you know the other thing about it is if I were to choose to not land here and get my forge off somewhere else, well then I'm going to be sitting in the middle of nowhere with nobody around and then sitting around for a full minute while my kill total doesn't go up. So it's just kind of like the internal debate right now doesn't really exist. Uh, you either land somewhere where nobody is and you wait around for a minute and lose your kill totals or you fight all the time and you get a couple of kills here and there. The respawn time is negligible, but you sit with the same kind of loot generally throughout the entire game. It's just that is too too polarized i think i would like to see an ability to where you can get better loot as the game goes on whether it is through chests or if the circle does move it might force people to like anticipate all right well this circle is moving to the northeast valley is going to open up here pretty soon let me try to get the valley before everybody else get my forge off and then i can fight with it I think that's really cool. I think that idea is kind of more in the line with the spirit of the mode more than it is, all right, just face palm yourself by jumping into the same area over and over and over again. So there's just some thoughts. Uh, I'm excited, I think, generally about the weapons with the ARs and the SMG being tuned down. The slug rifle perfect accuracy is definitely going to be the slug rifle super, super strong. I'm fine with it because it's fun, and a lot of people that are newer at the game aren't going to be able to have the same kind of skill gap as some of the better players, and it's going to elevate the skill gap a slight bit. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm excited about this new mode. Obviously, a lot of fine-tuning has to come into the UI. Right now, it shows everybody listed as winning, I, I think. Unless it's just if you're in the top three, you win. But you'll see that I get a win here. There's that shot I was talking about, that perfect accuracy, by the way. It's going to be fun. Uh, but that's all I got. Get on the PTS. Try it out. Get there and, uh, you know, have some fun with it. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Or, of course, you can always post on Twitter or the Reddit to let uh, hi res know what you think. But I'd be interested to hear your ideas and your feedback and constructive criticism. So feel free to leave some comments down below. And until the next one comes out, it's been fun having you guys. I've been I Hold Shift. And until next time, hope that you keep holding the down.